Well, both at school and at Cambridge, I spent a great deal of time playing my bassoon. I loved music, I loved to perform, and I was perhaps not as dedicated to uh, history as I should have been. We have this terrible word, Byzantine, and it's an adjective used of the most despicable, awful things, uh, too complicated, often very slippery or cunning or deceptive. That's how it's used frequently in the media today. And I think, it, I mean, it's an uphill battle to try and correct it. And I'm thrilled that the Heineken Prize has singled out my effort to reach out to a more general public and show what Byzantium was. I didn't discover Byzantium until the third year when there was a course called the Expansion of Medieval Europe. And I was always very interested in Europe and European history. And the expansion of medieval Europe took us all over the Mediterranean world and far beyond, and there was Byzantium. And our teacher used coins to explain trading patterns, and these beautiful gold coins suddenly became a signal of a power that I had not realised. I started to think about learning Greek going and going to Greece. And I'm sure it was the six months that I spent in Greece that really confirmed my determination to understand Byzantium. Because there for the first time I was in a culture where Byzantium was all around, in the churches, in the monuments, in the religion, in the festivals, where the language was the language spoken by the Byzantines. So that was really a very important turning point. And within that six month period, uh, I went to Constantinople. And that obviously was the top moment of realization that the Byzantine Empire had been at the center of a vast expansion. And before I went there, I did not know anything about Constantinople. And it was just amazing. What's really, really critical about Byzantium? Well, it's a huge empire, it's a great civilization, and what makes it great is that it combines features that we understand today as fundamental. The rule of law, and it was Roman law translated into Greek. Uh, the understanding that taxes have to be paid in order to finance an army that will defend the empire. The understanding that there is an imperial court which is the ideological centre and the symbol of that power. I really feel that Byzantium is, it could be interesting for many, many people if only it was written about in a way that made it accessible and excited readers and whetted their curiosity. In Byzantium, we see a society that was full of non-Greek speaking foreigners. They found a, a useful role in Byzantium not only trading uh, in their own goods, but bringing their own skills to the court, med doctors, translators, uh, foreign experts in all things, even magicians sometimes found an audience at the imperial court. So a great deal of toleration is built into this society and it flourishes on the variety of people in it. It is a, a broad gathering in of many skills. And that's the type of toleration that we should learn about today that would help us to accept those who are unfamiliar and look and speak differently, but who come to live in our country because they need to or because they bring special skills that we should appreciate. <laughs>